Hey guys, welcome to Newswave. Now, there was a lot of stuff that happened yesterday. Of course, the world pretty much stood still for a second in video games and watched Nintendo's big presentation with their Nintendo Direct. And there's a little more to that story than we originally thought. We pretty much thought it was going to be mostly ARMS, Splatoon 2, and maybe a 3DS game or two like Fire Emblem, but turned out to be a lot more. So with that, you know what, let's just get started. I guess let's just jump into that Nintendo Direct because there's a lot of stuff happening here. Now, they showed us, of course, Splatoon 2 and ARMS. They showed us release dates for both, which, by the way, Splatoon 2 is coming out July 21st with ARMS showing up June 16th, which is a little later for ARMS than I think myself and others thought. I, I think most of us were, were expecting it either at the end of May or, like, the first week in June. Uh, June 16th is a little late, but they do need decent games over the summer, so I'm okay with that because keep in mind, Mario Kart comes out what is in essentially May because it comes out at the end of April. A lot of that will carry over to May, and if they have any other indies show up or anything, they'll be fine going through May, which keep in mind is that third month. It's pretty critical to have a good third month since that's where the Wii U really fell off. And they want to obviously be different from what they had in their last generation. But I think they're okay because it's already selling better. And at this point, they have more games on the horizon coming up than they did with the Wii U. I'm just going to quickly touch on some of the awesome games that we did see there. And also keep in mind, go check out Nintendo's YouTube channel. They have so many trailers and stuff that I technically can't show you here because they'll claim the video. But there's a lot of awesome stuff going on there. The biggest one to me that really caught me off guard maybe caught some of you guys off guard too, was Payday 2. Now, if you are a fan of Nintendo and really do not play other systems, you are in for a treat because Payday 2 is an awesome game. It's, it's a really good, really well put together game and it's still supported now even though it came out a while ago. I mean, this game was out on the 360 and the PS3 and it's still supported. It had a re-release for the PS4 and Xbox One and it's been on Steam for a while. They've had all kinds of crazy... <laughs> I mean, they've had Goat Simulator DLC in this thing, and it's it's just overall an awesome game. What happens is you play as a bunch of thieves, essentially, who try to pull off different heists in different scenarios, whether you're trying to rob a bank or you are trying to rob a jewelry store, and they get more elaborate as you go on. You level up, you gain abilities, you gain items, you make friends online because it is a large co-op PvE style game and overall it's really cool it, it's it look up some trailers look up some gameplay on it I think you're gonna be really happy with this game when it comes out on the switch probably sometime in the fall is what they're saying late 2017 and it's gonna be great because it's gonna be handheld I this is something that's awesome for payday 2 to be able to play it in handheld mode maybe on the couch connect to your Wi-Fi hotspot and just playing online from there we did have Namco Museum because why not? Pac-Man pretty much has to be on every system known to man because that's just the way it is. Uh, but it also had like Dig Dug and, and, and a bunch of other games on there, which is really cool. Splatterhouse was there. So overall, a good idea for anyone who enjoys the older style games. And it was cool because you could turn it into portrait mode and get the classic arcade feel as well. We also had Fate Extella, which looked neat. It looked kind of like Dynasty Warriors almost. There were a lot of enemies on screen getting destroyed by the main character obviously like dinosaur warriors we just light up everyone feel super powerful and really the the little bit of gameplay they showed seemed to go off without a hitch now keep in mind the enemies that they're fighting are super low resolution polygon uh characters obviously because you have so many of them on screen and that's just a technique that they've used in dynasty warriors forever now but it looks cool it's again if you like those big hack and slash beat em ups i think you'll enjoy that too that's another trailer you can check out over on nintendo's uh youtube channel actually minecraft showed up because it's on again almost every system it was also on the wii u coming to the switch not a huge surprise. Uh, I do think it'll run better on the on the Switch only because it is, one, it's known hardware with the Tegra, and it, it honestly might even port the one over mostly from the PS4 for all we know, or they could just bring the one over with the Wii U because it does have the assets already in it, but it makes sense to bring Minecraft. They did say also have split screen. You can kind of put it in tabletop move, mode, use the Joy-Cons. I don't know how well that would work with that screen because it's so small. I assume you would want it to be on the larger TV when you are playing uh, split screen. I assume single player work fine. I mean, we play Minecraft Pocket Edition on our smaller phones all the time without issue. So yes, it'll work fine single player in handheld or tabletop. Might be a little bit of a squeeze with split screen. I would save that for the TV. But overall, Minecraft is just a good addition to the Switch library. They also announced that Puyo Puyo Tetris demo is out on the English eShop. Now, I know everyone pretty much can get it on the Japanese eShop a while ago, but it, it's, it strides to get it to the English eShop at this point. Obviously, put a demo on there, check out the English voice acting and everything. It should be available now in the coming soon section for you to download. And I have to assume a lot of people kind of raised an eyebrow and said, well, 
okay, Monopoly, but consider how great that would work for something that you can put like flat on the table and it looks like it could look like a Monopoly board. I mean, that's something that a couple people can sit around and play because you could do things like pass a Joy-Con around and kind of roll it for dice. And apparently the HD Rumble works just like that, where you can run, roll it around and it feels like dice are rolling and you throw them. And of course, I went through the Joy-Con, but you, you kind of make the motion for the dice to then drop on the table. Overall, it's a great idea. I think these kind of board game uh, softwares would work fine with the Switch. I just hope they're within reason price-wise. I, I don't want to see Monopoly come out for like $40. I would assume that would be like a $20 game, uh, maybe even a $10 game on the eShop, but who knows where that would go depending on how much they want to charge for it. I hope it's not a crazy amount because I think if Monopoly does well, you can see all the other types of board games and little party games come over well, and it would work fine too, I think. Now, of course, they hit us with a lot of arms and a lot of Splatoon gameplay and just kind of gave us a lot of info on it because those were the two big stars. I mean, that those were the, those were the two games they came out and said, these are definitely going to be shown more than likely because they were coming out around E3 time, didn't want to spend time at E3. That's usually where future games are, ones that won't be out till like Christmas time or the following year. And it made sense. Now they showed a lot of stuff with ARMS. It's, it's way more in depth than I think a lot of people have been giving it credit for. That looks like a game that is going to have some serious chess battles while you are playing with it. I mean, there's, there's so many weapon combos, people have special abilities, special moves, and there's just so much stuff happening on screen that I think you're going to be, it's, it's going to be like a fighting game almost, you know, where you're trying to fight the other person and try to outsmart them as well as just beat them in the game. Jumping from there over to Splatoon 2, we did see what looked like a horde mode for Splatoon 2, which is cool. You get some some PvE combat in there, and it, it it's just another mode to add Splatoon 2. It looked pretty fun. Um, I don't know how much that'll be played as compared to, say, the PvP mode that that's been known for, obviously. I mean, there's tons of competitions. They even announced a new competition that you can go join and get ready for on the Wii U. So that is where Splatoon 2's bread and butter is. I, I know they want to add another mode to it that some people will enjoy playing if they don't want to go fight other people and they just want to work together. But I do think that mode will be less popular by a good bit than just straight up PvP multiplayer. And on the 3DS, which they have not forgotten about, by the way, they're still releasing games on this system and it's popular. So, you know, why not? They did release or at least talked about a new Pikmin game going to it, which is great. We heard about this before and they show up with gameplay and everything. Hey, Pikmin, it looks great. It's another Pikmin game, why not? And then they also showed us Kirby, which is cool because that is available as a free to start game. It's interesting, it's like a free to play game. So I don't know if Nintendo has taken some cues from cell phone games, realizing that the free to play setup is actually pretty good for a company that wants to make money from it. You can start playing, you essentially need to buy energy or you wait, it, it's, you know what, it's free. If you wanna play more, you can pay for it or I assume earn it in game. I have not gotten a chance to play it myself, but from what they've described to us, it looks like it will be a freemium type game that you can just jump into, try out. If you don't like it, you can move on without having to pay the price tag of actually buying from a store. And they had some accessories show up as well. They gave us neon yellow, which is an odd choice. Neon yellow Joy-Cons. I think I would have preferred like a, like a neon green or maybe even just like a midnight like matte black finish to them. Maybe even like an arctic white with like black triggers and black buttons. I think there were a lot of other combinations they could have done other than neon yellow, but it's another Joy-Con color. I know there's a lot of people out there who like yellow, so it's another Joy-Con color to buy, which puts us at the, the two neon colors originally, the gray and then neon yellow now. They also showed off an interesting like charge grip for it that you put on the back of it. And I, I saw that and I was a little confused because I, I don't think a lot of people have been complaining about battery life for their Joy-Cons. I think it's been mostly people complaining about battery life for the Switch, right? So I'm not really sure what that's about. I mean, I guess if you want like, 40 hours out of a Joy-Con, I, I figured 20 hours was plenty because your system's going to die so many times over before your Joy-Con dies, which means you're going to charge your system with the Joy-Cons attached, which will subsequently charge your Joy-Con. So I'm not really sure why that's there. Maybe the grip makes it easier to hold the Joy-Con and that was the idea. And they were like, well, throw a battery in it. Why not? I guess, but I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Nintendo gets the message to make some sort of case or extended battery that's external to the system to release because I would be very interested in getting something that would improve battery life on the Switch. I have to imagine it's in the works. I mean, if there was a Joy-Con one that did not need it, I have to imagine the Switch was top priority. That one just got done first. We also had a standalone dock announced. Now they've had a standalone dock 
on their site for a while. I assume what they're telling us is the standalone dock also comes bundled with the HDMI cable and the power cord because just the dock has been on their site for a while at $60. I assume this is that $90 bundle that they talked about a while ago and we can now buy it in retail stores even. That's the big thing. I think it's going to be showing up at Walmarts and Targets and Best Buys and you'll be able to walk in and buy a new dock, which I am considering getting one just because then it'd be easier for me to go from streaming to upstairs, uh, TV and so forth. So I'll look into it. I, I just wish the price was a little lower on that thing. Ooh, okay, now that we've gotten through most of the direct, let me jump over real quick to the Xbox Scorpio. Now we've talked about the Scorpio at length, specs, details on games, 4K, all this stuff. Well, now we have a little bit of info that may tell us, one, what the system looks like, and two, what we can expect from the system's dev kit. Now, a dev kit is a developer kit. It's what developers use to develop games for the retail console that comes out. Now, recently, the Xbox One went through an update that allowed developers to use just an Xbox One, but now they have a Scorpio developer's kit, which has to be a good bit more powerful, at least than the regular Scorpio because what their idea here is to give developers overkill systems to then take that and then dumb the game down so it works on the Scorpio. It's a lot easier for these developers to take a blown up 4K game, shrink it a little bit, put it on the lesser powerful Scorpio, then try to make it on a less powerful system and move it up to the Scorpio. So what they've done is they've given us a dev kit. If you see it right here, take a look. It has the white and black bottom and then you'll see a little LCD screen there too. That's a frame counter, so apparently while they're working on it, it tells them frame rates and everything. It's interesting to note that dev kits are usually a little larger than the final retail version, and this system is still pretty small looking. In fact, it looks like an Xbox One S at face value with an LCD screen on the bottom and a bunch of switches that won't be there at launch, obviously. But this tells me the Scorpio will probably be a pretty slim system. I think it'll be slimmer than the PlayStation 4 Pro, which is pretty impressive, although the PS4 Pro may have a slim revision coming up. But still, that's pretty impressive for a machine that does 4K at 60 to be a very small, low profile. Let's talk about the specs real quick for this dev kit. So the system itself for the dev kit comes at 6.6 .6 teraflops. It gets there by doing 44 compute units rather than 40 compute units with the Xbox One Scorpio, the regular one. But the CPU is the same between either one. I assume that's just because they're trying to keep things parity across the board. So if you program for a much more powerful CPU for the dev kit, it will be harder to then get AI and stuff from that one to work on the regular one. From there, they doubled the RAM. That's right, 24 gigs, 24 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory is in the dev kit, which is almost like comical now for a game console to have that much memory. That is ridiculous. They also put a standard one terabyte drive in there as well as a one terabyte SSD drive. And the biggest thing to take away from all of this stuff you just heard is the form factor of this system. It is small, but it has so much more hardware than the regular Scorpio, which tells me the Scorpio is going to be that size or smaller, more than likely smaller. So you would get a system that does 4K60 at a very nice, sleek-looking box that can go in your entertainment center without looking like a VCR, like the regular Xbox One looks like. Staying with the Xbox One real quick, I want to say Black Ops 2 is now backwards compatible. It's kind of slipped through the cracks for a lot of news sites, but Xbox One's uh, backwards compatibility has grown by one with Call of Duty Black Ops 2, the most requested game for backwards compatibility that I've ever seen. I'm not really sure. It must have been a licensing issue. That's all I can assume because people have been begging for this game forever. You can now play it on your Xbox One, pop the disc in. There have been reports that it is a 16 gig download, which is pretty large, but there's a good chance that that's just the way it is for un uncompressed textures, all kinds of stuff there. Um, so you know what, it's, you just got to download a little bit of data, <laughs> but really it's great to see it there. The online community will just get bigger now because there's a lot of people who have an Xbox One, got rid of the 360s, couldn't play Black Ops 2 until now, so expect that online community to jump once again, just with new players who used to play it, but now have an Xbox One. And in the wake of all of this stuff with Nintendo Direct, something else kind of slipped through the cracks. There was a new trailer for Dragon Quest X. That's right, 10, not 11, 10, which is the massive multiplayer online RPG game that is coming out. And I am very excited for this one. Dragon Quest XI looks great, but I love these MMO Dragon Quest type games that they've been trying to push out now. And I'm a fan of playing good MMOs, good ones. Keep that in mind, good ones. And this one looks like it would be great. On the Switch, it'll be a portable system, which I am very excited to have an MMO like this in portable form factor. I think it'll work great. But there's no talks of it being localized right now. That's right, it, it, that's the thing that's killing me right now. It's bugging me so bad. And even if I imported this game, right? I feel like the servers are not here in the United States. They're in Japan. 
So I would get really bad, bad ping, bad lag, and it would be very tough to play. And that's if there's any English text in there at all. So Square, do me a favor, localize this game, bring it over, or at least make it so it can go to English and have like a US server set up somewhere over here for me so I can play it. I'm sure a lot of you guys would like to play it too that are not in Japan. So Square, get Dragon Quest XI over here, get Dragon Quest X over here, they'll both sell. Let's, let's get this done and bring it over here on the Switch. And that's it for Newswave today, guys. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let me think about anything we talked about today, whether it's any of the stuff from Nintendo Direct. I know it's a pretty exciting time. Although I do know some people were expecting maybe a little too much from this Direct. Although I think it was just right. We still have E3, guys. Two months till E3. Give it, give it a little bit of time. I think there's going to be some cool stuff at E3 for us to watch and see and hopefully even get some release dates for some other stuff. Let me know what you think about Kirby on the 3DS being like a free-to-play style game. I think it's a good idea from Nintendo. Diversify the market a little bit. Give people games that they can just try out for free and play and if they like it, they'll pay, put a little money into the pot to play a little more. And let me know what you think at this point about Dragon Quest X coming over because I think it needs to come over right. I mean, it, it looks great. Let's get 11 and 10 over here so we can play some awesome Dragon Quest games. That's it for now, guys. I will see you next time.